Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to be doing some polishing on the guitar. Got it uh, nicely sanded down like you probably saw in the last video we made. So it's kind of ready for final polish and then we'll be good to go. Get ready to, uh, to glue the neck in and then from there we'll pretty much set it up and uh, we'll have a fully playing guitar. So look forward to it. Should be a lot of fun. So this is kind of the final step on a on a finish then. Right. right. Okay. And uh, we're gonna use a pneumatic uh, random random orbital uh, three inch buffing machine. So you can see the the wheel on it is a little offset. So when this moves, it doesn't just actually spin in a circle. It kind of moves they back and forth. They call them dual action, actually, or some people do, because there's two different act movements going on. There's a tiny orbit, which is about an eighth of an inch little circles, and then also the whole uh, the whole pad is kind of going around in a in a in a circular motion. And what it, what that does is it just kind of prevents leaving circular scratches on on the uh, finish. And so we're going to use a pad. This is this is kind of one of the harder pads, right? Right. It's a firm, so pretty we, firm pad. You know, it, because of how hard this lacquer is, we want to use something that uh, you know actually makes a, a noticeable difference with it. it. Has some cut to it. So the firmer the pad, the more it will cut. Um, we'll see how obviously it looks. We're probably going to base that off of how the how the top looks afterwards and if the, the top looks good then you know, we might just call it uh, call it done but if not you know we can go back with a softer pad and some more ultra fine kind of polishing compound I'm also going to use some uh, HD speed uh, they call it a correction glaze but really it's it's a polish and a protectant and it's a fairly aggressive polish uh, so these are actually all Automotive polishes, right? Right. Yeah. So, which they they have lots more money in the automotive industry to develop these things, and they've done a lot of development over the last few years that you know, really kind of dwarfs what what you have available in wood finishing areas. I've kind of abandoned wood finishing polishes and gone with the auto body stuff. And what we'll do is we'll put we're going to divide the guitar into about four areas. So what we noticed, you know, obviously there's a, a much higher gloss here than where the sanding's done, but uh, it's kind of hard to tell. Let's see if I can get it. There are some, you know, there you can kind of see. There's some scratches, and that's just from previous steps. Um, the polishing isn't actually scratching it. It's just kind of highlighting where there were some additional scratches. And... Uh, my dad said, you know, he's almost never been able to just sand a guitar and then polish it and it's good. Normally, you have to go back a step or two um, and kind of figure out, you know, how to, uh, to get rid of these scratches. So it's, you know, it's a multi-step process. You, you, could, you could just leave it as it is. I mean, it doesn't look bad, uh, but you get up close and, you know, you can, you can see those scratches. And, you know, obviously, you spend this much time on doing something, you want to do it the right way. So... We're gonna go, I'm gonna finish uh, polishing the bottom part of it just so we can kind of see 
where the rest of these scratches are. And then we'll actually kind of go back through the sanding process a little bit and then, uh, and then repolish again, see if we can get rid of those scratches. You know, I was talking previously about how you sand in different directions so that you could actually identify, okay, those scratches are, that's from the thousand grit step. Right. Which is really useful. At this point, we didn't really do that, and so we could just kind of guess, you know, so we're probably going to go back to, you know, probably 1500 grit. Looks like it ought to get those out, but. And then move from 15 to the, you know, 15 using the, uh, these special auto body pads, um, the 3M stuff, which is, this stuff's awesome. Um, and then use some of this Mirica, Mirica uh, 2000 and 4000. Uh, and this stuff is also really, really nice. Um, kind of two different things. Both of these are auto finishing stuff too. Oh yeah. So, you know, it's kind of funny that you almost treat uh, the finish of your guitar like you would the finish on a car. But, you um, know, some of the classic guitar guys, they do use lacquer on their guitar, on their cars. Do they really? Yeah. Yeah. They, quite, quite often it might be acrylic lacquer, but you know, there's probably some guys that might even use nitro lacquer. And acrylic lacquer and nitro lacquer are not that dissimilar. The same buffing compounds and things can be used on both of them. Now, is nitro lacquer similar to the nitro stuff that they used in uh, the binding? Yeah, it's the same material. It's just kind of a different uh, form, you know, a different. Uh, and then after many, many years, it will almost uh, kind of. Not, it just decomposes. Some right? of it does. Some of it doesn't. It's weird yeah. stuff. Some of it will just crumble like it did on that Gibson and, right. uh, and other other stuff. Some of it will shrink. There's a lot of guitars out there with binding that shrinks and pulls away from different areas. Which is that what happened to the pickguard? Yeah, it shrunk big time. And that's nitro? Yeah, nitrocellulose. They used to make pool balls out of nitrocellulose plastic back in the 1920s and stuff. Really? And then sometimes when the guys would break on the break, those pool balls would explode. <laughs> That's, you you know, know it was a good break then, huh? Literally. And they, they've, they've been able to kind of prevent that, but the stuff is still extremely flammable. And when they ship, like the plastic that they ship me, you know, this stuff right here, uh, they had to ship it in a hazardous materials container. Which, which plastics? This tortoise shell binding. Oh, uh, okay. Hazardous materials because it's. And actually, you can take the shavings of it. And I tried it. I always like to play with it. Take the shavings and take a lighter and drop the shavings as it kind of floats down. And it'll hit the lighter and just go. So is, it, is that because it's nitroglycerin or is it. No, is it's, it it's it's nitro? Similar, though. Yeah. It's an explosive material if you had it in the right form. If you have dust, a dust cloud of it and ignited it, your guitar like, oh. might be a bomb. Just saying. I've just... heard of people taking a lighter to get rid of the binding and just light it and just go. And the guitar is fine. And... <laughs> wow. That's weird stuff. <laughs>
did uh, all the sanding on the back again and then did uh, another polish on it and you can see it is nice and shiny it's got a nice finish to it so it's not perfect uh, which is to be kind of expected first time doing this but uh, you know this is the back of the guitar so I'm gonna obviously have some scratches on it just from normal playing and uh, wearing it against my body uh, I'll probably gig with this guitar so you know it's it's not a showpiece this is uh, meant to be a player's guitar I think for the top what we're gonna do is just start the sanding process all over again um, you know go through the 1500 the 2000 the 4000 and then polish it and uh, see if we can kind of eliminate having to polish it re-sand and then polish again uh, just make sure sanding all the scratches out because uh, this is really going to be the showpiece we really want this to to look good uh, and I'll you know make sure it comes out right no matter how many times I have to try gone back and re-sanded 1500, 2000, 4000 for the second time and uh, we're gonna use the polish and try and polish it and uh, see how it comes out. Hopefully we don't have to go back and sand it again but uh, if we do you know so be it. That's the nature of doing this stuff. It's It takes work. It's not easy especially if you want to do it right. So again, I'm going to break the guitar into fourths, and uh, let's polish her up. One thing that I noticed during this final polish was that I wanted to apply a considerable amount of force down on the pad, compressing it at least halfway, if not a little bit more. And you want to go pretty slow as well and allow the pad to really dig in. So don't rush over the top as you're doing this final buff to a high gloss. You wanna apply a decent amount of force, go slowly, and the results, uh, I think, speak for themselves. So, so uh, here's the final product, guys. Give it to you in a different light so you can see all the all the blues and how they shimmer through it's just it's crazy how much coloration there is like that the, what they call chitoyance pops out the, the curly grain kind of reflects the light on one side or the other and it'll kind of change sides at a certain point which gives it an amazing figure and depth right you can see it right there as you rotate it